welcome to this 18th, there's so many Sundays at Pentecost, I lose track, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, you bless us with your presence, we hope the service is a blessing to you, we welcome those watching by YouTube, first thing first, we're going to invite Pastor Laura to come up, she's going to uh, give you a brief announcement about the church directory and scheduling your photos. This stand and heels, I'm like really moving up in the world today. <laughs> we are so excited to be working together on a new directory. Um, pictures for our new directory will be taken on October 13th and 14th between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And you can sign up for your pictures by um, seeing me. I'll be um, out in the Narthex area after worship today. You can stop and I can get you signed up for your pictures. Or you can go online and schedule to have your picture taken. I have some flyers out there that you can take with you that have all the information about signing up online. Um, <clears throat> you can also call me if you want. Evenings are better because I'm a full-time job and I can do it for you over the telephone. So whatever is easiest for you. The more folks um, that we have pictured, obviously, the better our directory will be. Everyone who's photographed will get a copy of the directory in an 8x10. And the directory program we're working with this year will also allow us to have apps for our smartphone with a special code so that only the folks from our church can access our directory. And you'll be able to have your directory on your smartphones after we complete our directory project. So if you have any questions, please see me. Or you can even ask Pastor Dave or Vilma if you're not sure how to get a hold of me. They'll help you um, get my contact information. And there are several churches using the same directory company in the area during the month of October. So if our dates don't work for you and you still want to get your picture taken for our directory, I can get you scheduled at one of the nearby churches in order to get your picture taken. So we just look forward to working together and having a beautiful new church directory. Thank you. If I wear heels, people would talk, so. <laughs> I think it's great that the directory, you can get your picture taken at another church that's doing pictures around the same time, that you can still be involved. I think uh, our Irma and uh, Jim are doing that, I think, they're, or somebody, I forget, somebody said, yeah. So anyway, thank you, Pastor Laura. Please sign up for those pictures. Um, I am saddened to announce that Rod Holland uh, the son-in-law of Kent Myers passed away yesterday. He had been, we've been praying for Rod for quite a while. He was up in Boston for a bone marrow transplant. It was a year to the day that he had just gone to the hospital because he wasn't feeling well. Uh, it was a year to the day that he passed away. So we're keeping Dave Myers, uh, Kent and his siblings, Christy and Kyle, the Swanger family, we're keeping all those folks in our prayers, I think um, Kent and his wife, or Kent and somebody had gone to Boston and they had just gotten to Boston when they got a text that Rod had passed away. So um, uh, we're keeping them in our prayers. The, a the AED, you had received an email that our AED was not working, the battery was out. The, uh, we got the battery, it's working now, so when my sermon leads you to see that tunnel at the end of the, that light at the end of the tunnel, I can, we can shock you back. Um, we begin collecting blankets next Sunday, October 3rd through uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. We're collecting blankets, so we have some up here already. Bill has a blanket in case my sermon goes long. He can just wrap himself up in a blanket. And then uh, after that, uh, we begin collecting gloves and hats the Sunday after Thanksgiving, thanks to the Social Ministry Committee. Uh, if you have questions, you could talk to uh, Mike or Cheryl Good. Uh, crop walk will be virtual this year on October 24th so look for information out there about the crop walk you can we'll, we'll have a, a, a collection plate in the back and and a, a, we'll, we'll identify that clearly that you can bring in a donation to the crop walk uh, but the crop walk is October 24th uh, let's see people that are celebrating milestones birthdays Tim Bastian Tim Happy birthday, his birthday's in two days, 28th. Sandy McCord, Sandy's here. Her birthday's the 28th as well. What, no applause for these folks? We... <laughs> uh, since they're here, we have to, we have to uh, let's see. Patrick Donahue, Donahue, 
His birthday is 28th, Jacob Moyer, the 28th. Everybody was born on September 28th. Yeah. Like, oh, busy day. Pam Noland on October 1st and Greg, Greg Kratzer on October 1st. Any of those other folks here? Any birthdays we missed? No, anniversaries, Rich and Deb Weiss have an anniversary on October 1st. We had uh, Bill Kelly, that is the husband of Linda Kelly, the father of James. James is uh, our vice president on council. He is in the hospital, Hershey Medical Center. We're praying for Robert Workman. Robert uh, had gone in for an appendectomy uh, last Sunday or Monday. Um, people were praying for, we continue to pray for Delbert. Delbert's here, but we're still praying for you, Delbert. Uh, Sally Angle, Tom Dirk, Barb Hardy, Steve Weichel, Glenn Hoffer, Diane Schubert, and Elizabeth Roach. Are there any announcements I have? Yes. On the 3rd of September. I've got to get that name again. I can't quite hear. September 30th, John and Sherry Ebersole. You have an anniversary on the 30th. How many years? I don't know. John was shaking his head. I'm not sure if he agrees on the date or... No, I'm just kidding. Well, happy anniversary. For some reason, you're not on our list, so we've got to figure that out. Um, anybody else? Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude.
I invite you to please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Let's just take a moment and reflect on our week in the ways that we just could have loved God more and served our neighbor more. Gracious God, we acknowledge that we are sinners and we confess our sins, those known to us that burden our hearts, those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin, liberate us from the bondage of guilt, work in us that which is pleasing in your sight, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From the house of David, God raised up a mighty Savior. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who comes to set us free. Remembering the covenant, God delivered us from our enemies. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who comes to set us free. Before God, we are holy and righteous, free to worship without fear. Blessed be With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and forgives us all our sins. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, guides our feet into the way of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated uh, for the reading. The first reading today is from the book of Numbers, the 11th chapter. The ramble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic, but now our strength has dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give all, to all these people? For they have come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me the 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, bring them to, me, bring them to my tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. 
and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the, some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. And they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, the other Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, and Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of those chosen men said, my Lord Moses stopped them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for, the, for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people with prophets and that the Lord would put their, his spirit on them? Word of God, word of life. The psalmody, which we will, excuse me, the psalmody which we will do this morning is from the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Lord, to be desired are they who hold, much of the Lord's heart and hold. Sweeter far the honey than honey in the gold. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, your servant from presumptuous sins, let them not get domain over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accessible in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from the book of James, the fifth chapter. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are they cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed frequently that it might not rain and that there were years and, and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to stand as you are able. Let's say together the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Sanctify us in the truth. Hallelujah. The holy gospel 
according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon afterward speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never unquenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Too much salt, not enough salt. My uh, wife and daughter and I like to watch cooking shows. Well, I, I survive the cooking shows, but I'm fascinated by the fact that in many of the decisions about winners and losers, it comes down to one of two things, too much salt, too little salt. Either the cook has not respected the meal by adding enough salt, or the cook has assaulted it, get it, has assaulted the meal with too much. Now, I'm not a salt person. The blander, the better in my world. So it makes me curious. Well, I'm a Lutheran. I mean, come on, right? So it makes me curious how just one ingredient, even just a pinch, how much seasoning can break someone's culinary experience. It's amazing to me how one neglected or overused ingredient can determine if you beat Bobby Flay or not. Now, I am curious about something similar can happen in the church. How one salty encounter, how one salty comment, one neglected handshake, one salty tweet can become ground zero for a personal war or a mass exodus from the church. Everyone will be salted with fire, Jesus says. What does that mean? I hope, I hope you're wondering to yourself, what could Jesus mean? Well, let's look at the context for a minute. The context in which Jesus makes this statement. He was just, or he's just commented on someone who was brought to his attention by the disciples because this person was doing deeds of power in the name of Jesus, but they weren't one of them. And the disciples wanted to shut that person down. Jesus says, in essence, you know, hold on. Don't you think that if this person isn't against us, then perhaps they might be for us? So why stop them? Then he comments on those who will set up stumbling blocks in the way of people who might come to believe in Jesus. And he makes that famous statement, it's better if a millstone were hung around your neck and to be thrown into the sea than you to put up a stumbling block in front of a person's faith. So let's consider for a second, what are faith affecting stumbling blocks? What are faith affecting stumbling blocks? 
I think I would be safe to say that all of this death and despair that has come around because of the pandemic, the arguments that it has created, the dissension, the division, the recent deaths of young people in their 20s and 30s now with the new variant, or even the death of Rod Holland that had nothing to do with COVID. But you know, when young people die too young, they can be faith affecting stumbling blocks for people. Or the, the whole issue still coming up around the Catholic Church and sexual abuse has affected the faith of many people, especially in the Catholic Church. So our own personal behaviors can become stumbling blocks to people in their faith. The decisions that we make can become stumbling blocks. If you realize your, your behavior is a stumbling block, if you have some kind of insight that your behavior is affecting the faith of others, perhaps you need to do some discernment. Perhaps you need to scrape off those behaviors. Scrape off those people that are leading you down that road of perdition, dare I say it. I remember the movie Scrooge, and uh, uh, Frank Cross says to Claire, he goes, I'm going to give you one piece of, of advice, Claire. Scrape off those people. If you want to save someone, save yourself. We can't allow people or behaviors to pull us down and impact our faith. Now, is that fair for me to say? Is this what Jesus meant by you will be salted with fire? Is he saying that we need to be careful how we use our salt, meaning our faithful or, or non-faithful behaviors? Is Jesus saying we can either have too much salt or too little salt, both in our faith and in how we lead our lives? Too many bad behaviors is not good for the community and our faith community. Too few good works is no good either. Of course, this also means that we can come across as too righteous or too self-righteous if we try to spread too much salt too soon or too quickly or too abruptly. That can become a stumbling block to people. So there's a fine line between too much and too little salt. We have to find that fine balance. We have to find that sweet spot. Well, or uh, I should say we should have salty reflection. What is the right amount of salt in our lives if we're going to beat the Bobby Flays of sin, death, and the devil? Of course, both salt and fire have been around since the beginning of time. You know that. Salt has been used for many purposes over the years. Sure, it seasons. It also preserves. Salt has been used as a preservative for thousands of years. Salt has been used for trading, especially in the Egyptian and the Mayan kingdoms. Salt was more valuable than gold in those days. So salt has been a great commodity for many years. Of course, fire. What does it mean to speak about the flames of our faith? We know that fire can season, it refines, it changes the context of things. We often speak about the fires of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is usually pictured as flames on the day of Pentecost. The tongues of flame were, were alighting on each of the apostles. In the Exodus, the people followed a pillar of flame by night. The burning bush for Moses and his uh, experience with God Elijah offering up that, that, that uh, sacrifice on, the, on the, the Mount Carmel. And when it, it, licked up, it, it lit up the entire sacrifice and the priests of Baal. So salt and fire are things that we are ultimately and personally and intricately familiar with. In both positive and negative aspects of our life and our world. So we can be salted by the fire in our lives, right? 
Life is not easy. I'm not the first person to tell you that. Life can be dangerous, sometimes really challenging. Just making it through each day for a lot of people is a great challenge. And then we add to that, trying to do the work of Jesus Christ in a world that doesn't really embrace religion as much as it used to. For those who choose to do the works of Jesus, we know that it takes time and necessitates necessitates sacrificing time to do the work of the Lord while balancing that out with our families and our friends and our work. Spreading the salt of faith is not always popular. It's not always easy. And yet salt is the salt of our faith is what preserves our faith. The fires of the Holy Spirit is what removes the impurities of sin, death, and the devil. The time that you spend here each week hearing the gospel, hearing it read, hearing it preached, sharing in some ministry, that should change you. It should season you every week. It should salt your your lives. It should put a fire in your belly, the fire of the Holy Spirit, even if just a little. But God doesn't want just a little of us. God wants all of us, all of our heart, our mind, our very being. We know that a little salt can change the taste of food dramatically. And we know that a lot of salt can make you go, wow. So we each need to find our salt, right? Our salt of ministry, whatever the gifts we have with inside of us. And spread that salt. We need to share it. We need to add it to the flavorings. For others, not only in our church, but in the community as well. It begins with just a little. A little word, a little bread, a little wine. That changes you a little. And you imagine what more we can do when we're all working together in that rainbow of people. Offering up just a little bit of our gifts, a little bit of our time, a little bit of our talents. Puts us to an uncomfortable conclusion that we are going to experience the fires of faith, the fire of God, the power of God. We are going to be salted with fire, those trials of fire, those sent by God, those imparted on us by our other human beings around us. The purposes of these trials then are to preserve our faith. These trials of fire should strengthen our faith. They should harden our reserve. They should teach us to rely on our faith, on God's love, mercy, and grace. So just let that sit on you for a second, like a tongue of fire. I want you to, we're going to do a little experiment. You've been sitting too long staring at me. I want you to turn to somebody not related to you. I want you to turn to that person, and I want you to ask them what trial of fire they've been experiencing this week. You have one minute. Go. Ask that person, and if the only person near you is a relative, okay, I give you permission. What trial of fire have you faced this week? Set right in his back, right? Okay, now what I want you to do is when you are listening to the prayers of intercession this morning, and when Cindy says, uh, 
uh, we pray for those that we name in the silence of our hearts. I want you to pray for that person that you just talked to and their trial of fire. And then I want you to pray for that person this week. I challenge you to do this act of prayer this week. Jesus says at the end of this text, have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. In other words, as salty Christians, you know, knowing that it's not just salt, you know, salt makes food taste better, but as disciples, we are supposed to be people set apart, bearing the burdens of others, if we are going to have salt in ourselves. So as disciples, as salty Christians, our, our mission, part of our mission is to is to bear the burdens of others, to help make other people's lives better. Even if we do nothing more than give them a moment of peace every day. So I want you to pray for that person this week. Now, we all lose some saltiness once in a while. Thomas Merton once said that the true nature of the church is to be the body where the members of that body bear one another's burdens, and as such, we can get bogged down. We can feel like we have that great millstone hanging around our neck, waiting to be tossed into the sea. But the way that we bear each other's burdens is through the growth, our growth in Christ, sustained by those fires of the Holy Spirit. This is what it means to have salt in ourselves. We, we don't lord it over others, my friends, but we serve the other. The church is truly to be the place where we not only feast on Christ, the words of Christ and the sacraments and the teachings of Christ, but we all seek that right balance of salt. Not too much, not too little, but always seeking, always trying to find that balance so that we can serve God as we should, serve our neighbor as we should. It will never be perfect. But if we give ourselves over to the power of the Spirit, the love and mercy of grace of Jesus Christ, then together we make our way along this journey of faith. James reminds us, when things get down, when we feel as if we have lost our saltiness, he says, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. I believe that. If we persevere, we will be just that right amount of preservative and saltiness and peace that the world needs. Pope Francis once said about this text that we should be salt for each other. Because it must mean something about peace if we're going to be at peace with one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able, together with the whole church. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts, strengthening them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. We lift to you those on our prayer list and those we name in silence in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing upon those celebrating birthdays this week, including Tim, Sandy, Patrick, Jacob, Pamela, and Greg on the wedding anniversaries of Rich and Deb and John and Sherry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, acolytes, and ushers. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those who we have loved and known and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promise of salvation. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we set the communion table. Change my heart, oh God. 
make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. I invite you to please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all. By your powerful word you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son through him. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. If you forgot to grab a community cup on your way in, now's the time to you raise your hand. We'll make sure somebody brings one to you. Uh, and seeing nobody raising their hand, we take the wafer out first. Just ask that you hold it up. We will do this as a community. My friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. We do the same with the wine or grape juice, whichever you have chosen. Again, I just ask that you hold that up. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. Receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Will you go to serve the Lord? With the Lord's help, we will. You may be seated. Three things I just wanted to remind you of. Coffee hour has begun, and so there is coffee and refreshments in the parlor. Please stay for that. Pastor Laura will be in the back to sign you up for your pictures. And there's one other anniversary I forgot, and that is my first year. My anniversary is this week. Uh, I, began, I began October 1st, so uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like a year has gone by already. You know, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of good ministry. It's been a blessing uh, to be a part of uh, having been called here to Zion. So um, yeah, I just wanted to mention and my, my thanksgiving to God to be called here. So with that said, 